All right, so in this video, I'm going to be covering respiratory failure and ARDS, okay? Acute respiratory distress syndrome, okay? So first, respiratory failure, okay? Respiratory failure, it's a failure in the gas exchange, okay? It's often classified as hypoxemic, so low blood oxygen levels, okay? Or hypercapnic, okay? Too much CO2, all right? Hypoxemic respiratory failure, it happens when your PaO2 level, okay, is less than 60, all right? We know the normal ranges is 80 to 100, but if it's less than 60, it could they run into the risk of developing respiratory failure or going into respiratory failure, okay? Um, if they are hypercapnic or experiencing hypercapnic respiratory failure, it could be identified when your PaCO2 level is greater than 50. And we know our normal range is 35 to 45. The more we have, the more toxic and acidic the body and the blood is. So greater than 50 will result in hypercapnic, okay? Respiratory failure, it is not a disease process, okay? It's not a disease process. Something has to cause it or lead to respiratory failure, okay? Hypoxemic respiratory failure is the most common. It's more common than hypercapnic, okay? But this is lung failure, failure of ventilation, okay? The pathophysiology behind it, a result of impairment or dysfunction of the structures responsible for the ventilation, okay? So, for instance, um, COPD, okay? COPD is a disease process that affects the ventilation, so that can lead, for somebody that has COPD and having an exacerbation, it could lead to respiratory failure, even cystic fibrosis, okay? <clears throat> um, etiology for this, for a pulmonary condition, um, it could be tumor blocking the trachea, asthma, cystic fibrosis, as I stated, pneumonia, and pulmonary edema, Okay, non-pulmonary conditions that can lead to this or be common comorbidities or neurologic um, problems, peripheral nervous system issues, and even central nervous system problems. There are comorbidities as well, uh, like Guillain Barr, myasthenia gravis, obesity, COPD, bronchial asthma, pulmonary edema, and pneumonia that can also develop, um, lead into respiratory failure. Okay. Physiological, um, prevent or reduce the likelihood of the known comorbidity, okay? So control that COPD, control that asthma so that res respiratory failure does not occur. The client, they may need home oxygen therapy, okay? And as always, you wanna take in your age-related changes and the fact that their lung elasticity is reduced, okay? Because for someone with COPD, we don't want to hyperoxygenate them either. We want to keep them on a two liter. All right. So psychosocial um, activity restrictions may affect their ability to participate in social and physical activities. So think about how that is going to affect them mentally. OK, how is that going to affect their psych? OK, the clients also must um, emotionally acknowledge the condition that this is what they are experiencing. Um, they must show um, or demonstrate a readiness to learn how to care for their condition, okay? There may be some financial problems um, with medical care of respiratory failure. It can get costly, okay, especially the medications to treat. I think I mentioned in the asthma video, asthma medications are very expensive, okay? So be mindful of some financial problems that your patients might go through. Client safety as well not smoking near an oxygen tank or while receiving oxygen therapy, okay, is big. Some lab tests or um, diagnostic studies you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you're gonna test everything. You're gonna test the entire body. Reason being because you need to see what is causing this respiratory failure. Our body systems, they all work together to again maintain our, our body's homeostasis. So if something is going wrong with one system, a domino effect, if it's not taken care of, it's going to trickle down to the rest of the systems. Okay, so we need to test everything. We need ABGs. We need a chest x-ray, CBC, a basic metabolic panel and or a comprehensive metabolic panel for your electrolytes, kidney and liver function, a sputum culture, a blood culture, a urine culture, 
thyroid tests, pulmonary function tests, EKGs. We need to test everything, okay? So your role as a nurse, coordinate the care with, um, with everyone on the, court, on the care team, safety, medication administration, mechanical ventilation, assess and maintain your ABCs, client education as well. Um, but just be mindful, okay, of what is occurring, what's causing this respiratory failure, okay? Um, next, I'm going to talk about your ARDS, okay? Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, ARDS, A-R-D-S, okay? Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome is a, an acute condition, okay? It's an acute, acute condition, and it usually begins within a week after a lung injury, okay? It develops very, very quickly, and it is life-threatening, okay? This happens when there is a fluid buildup inside the alveoli that dilutes and waters down the surfactant, which I've told you guys, surfactant is kind of like a slime, like a putty. So if you keep adding water to it, keep adding water to it, it's gonna slowly break it down, okay? So fluid is building up in the alveoli, breaking down that surfactant, altering and preventing your gas exchange from occurring. The lungs, as a result, become very stiff, okay? If they become stiff, they can't expand and relax. Okay? They're not able to move and get enough oxygen throughout the body for normal functioning. So you see how that's a problem. Okay? That's acute respiratory distress syndrome. Completely different from respiratory failure. Okay? The pathophysiology behind this, this is a life-threatening hypoxemia resulting from edema. Okay? Life-threatening. Hypoxemia, this is low oxygen in the blood. Okay, which happens because there is edema, that water, that fluid filled inside the alveoli. Okay, it's filled in the alveoli, which is preventing the gas exchange and the oxygen from getting to the blood. Okay, which makes them stiff, makes the lungs stiff. So the lungs lose elasticity. Okay, it is unresponsive to oxygen because if that alveoli is filled with fluid, if you give them oxygen, where is it gonna go? It's not getting to the alveoli for it to be exchanged. There's fluid in there. It's too full, okay? So you will have an irregular pattern in the lungs, a VQ mismatch for sure, and the lungs become stiff and poorly, um, poorly movable, okay? Um, a lot of the times this happens with patients in the ICU, okay, because they're just sitting there in the bed and the the mecha under mechanical ventilation is breathing for them and all of this. Um, causes for this is sepsis, pneumonia, aspiration, okay? Um, and a lot of the times they will turn them prone, okay? So if you're laying here like this, you're just laying there, the secretions and the fluid is just building up, building up, building up. They're gonna flip you, okay? You're laying there supine, they're gonna flip you over prone to help kind of disrupt that fluid, okay? So it's not as stiff and just sitting there. They're gonna flip you over to disrupt it, okay? To get it moving around so that when you turn and flip you back supine, they can try to suction off the fluid and get some of that off, okay? How this can impact um, a person's overall health, muscle wasting, weight loss, functional impairment, cognitive loss, G-tube for nutritional support, okay? And a tracheostomy, all right? Um, the testings that they will do for this as well um, are, let's see, I guess it just, it depends on the diagnosis, okay? They will get ABGs and all of that as well um, and determine like, okay, is it a problem, is it a problem that involves the heart or not? Um, let's see, next, 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 your role. I'm losing my train of thought. Your role, continuous assessment of labs, okay, your ABGs and all of that. Frequent skin assessments. As I mentioned, these patients are um, usually in the ICU, okay? Frequent skin assessments, you want to detect those pressure injuries, okay, as an example, pressure injury, okay? Pain assessment and management, family engagement, okay? Care coordination with everybody on the care team, okay? <clears throat> 
So going through all of this, you definitely want to go through your nursing process, okay? Um, and evaluate, you definitely wanna um, evaluate and make sure that you are reaching the goal. The goal is increased oxygen delivery and avoiding further injury and further damage to the lungs. Early intervention and um, an early noticing of the signs and symptoms and manifestations is key with this, okay? Prone positioning, okay? Conservative fluid replacement with diuretics and nutritional support. Um, administration and management of sedation, okay? And that me mechanical ventilation, all right? Control ven ventilatory support, that's that mechanical ventilation. Set inspired oxygen conservation to the lowest level to facilitate oxygenation. We don't wanna hyperoxygenate these patients, okay? So that is your respiratory failure and your ARDS, okay? Acute respiratory distress syndrome. Hopefully you were able to see the difference between the two, okay? Happy studying!